Like every pious Jewish boy, Paul of Tarsus grew up reciting prayers by heart. One went like this. Thank you, God, that I was not born a pagan, a woman, or a slave. A blatantly elitist and sexist prayer. It seems, however, that Paul learnt a lot on the road to Damascus. A complete revolution in his world view. His understanding of how things were meant to be was shattered and gradually remade by the gospel under the power of the Holy Spirit. There's plenty of irony in today's story about Lydia. She's a strong woman, rich and highly successful, probably a widow. She's running the prosperous family business. Moreover, she is of Greek ethnicity. Indeed, a fellow traveler with Judaism, a monotheist, who appreciates Jewish scriptures, but a pagan nevertheless, a pagan. She has a large household that probably includes slaves. Paul, on account of his ingenuity, there's no synagogue, so he, goes, he finds out where people go on the Sabbath. He finds them along the river. He goes out there, and this woman listens to him. She, she thinks, I've found a, a font of wisdom. And then she says, well, if you really think me a true believer, come and stay with us. Paul ends up with private quarters in a pagan mansion, which becomes a domestic church where countless hundreds are catechized and received into the faith with baptism and confirmation. His church is established in this Roman colony called Philippi and God has completely bypassed the synagogue and men and done it through a woman. And I'm sure Lydia would have gone on to treat the slaves in her household as her own sons and daughters, because that's what the Christians did. Well, the power of the gospel at work, driven by the Spirit. What can we learn from this for today? It was revolutionary at the time. Could it still be revolutionary today to try to, to change the culture uh, through families? Would that still be a, a brilliant idea today? We've seen a lot of, a lot of energy wasted, I think, by women trying to make a difference through politics. Well, maybe that's one avenue, but isn't God showing us another way to, for the gospel to take root, for the, the fruitfulness of the gospel? Isn't God showing us how influential a woman can be? Strong woman, competent, running a big business. Probably one of the biggest businesses in Philippi, actually. Very competent person. And she's, she's highly influential. I mean, she's the instrument that God uses to change the culture in that place, to make it a Christian colony. 
Can't these things still happen today? She's also a good listener. And she wants to get learn as much as she can from Paul. And then she's empowered to run her own race. And goodness knows, when Paul left, she continued to do wonderful work. That's for sure. We see the fruitfulness of the gospel as a leaven in the culture. And also, of course, the importance of catechesis. Um, getting good ideas into heads. <laughs> 